Hello fellow reader and welcome to this Lunar Nebula reading webtoon review. So I'm going to click on webtoon, it's going to pop up for your information. Webtoon is free to use. You do need to make an account to use it. It doesn't let you read offline unless you download something. An example of that, you can see I've currently subscribed to quite a few series, but you can download. It does say when you download, you can only download those things once, but they last for two weeks once you've downloaded them. Uh, and it'll let you select a range. And I'll try to show that in a little bit. Other than that, uh, you do want Wi-Fi to read. It's pretty essential. For parents to know about, there are in-app payments available in Webtoon. For example, let's just click on Luminae. We'll go to the most recent episode. We'll do that. Once you get to the end of an episode, you'll basically get shown this, saying it'll cost five Webtoon coins to unlock a faster update of this comic. So that's the fast pass. You go to the coin shop, and it'll give you a very good breakdown of all this. If every update fast pass costs about five coins, then you'll get two updates for a dollar. Whereas if you pay the $30, you'll get about 66 if I did the math correctly. So that is one thing to keep in mind. And of course, uh, another thing to keep in mind is that you can only usually get up to three comics as a fast pass advance. Because these people are trying to create these comics, you know, weekly, it's usually a single creator. And they need money also. <laughs> Webtoons get some of this money, and so does the creator, which is nice. Just for your information, there is the Webtoons Originals section, and then there's also the Webtoons Canvas section. The difference is that the originals are exclusive to Webtoons. You shouldn't be able to find these anywhere else. Webtoons pays these authors and creators to make these. Whereas Canvas, usually these are posted on a number of sites. And they can make money from advertisements if you do get to the end of one of these stories. Let's see. Canvas comics that do have extra episodes available it will require you to watch an ad to read the episode, which I think is fair. Now, they are starting to also do, for completed series, on I think mainly their originals panel, or section I should say, to make you pay coins and use daily passes in order to read those. Now, I've read a few completed ones. Salty Studio should be completed. Now, I haven't noticed this yet, but apparently, the finished series, it should require a daily pass, which is free. Each day, you'll be able to read one episode, which is a lot faster than waiting a week. So I think that's fair. And if you did want to continue reading, you could pay in coins to unlock future episodes. I'm still not seeing that on the app, but I have um, a link to that reference, so I'll try to put that down in the video description. Overall, I really like the Webtoon app. I don't like that they weren't as supportive of their tablet version. I did used to read on the iPad. I love that because you had bigger pictures. You could scroll faster through things if you wanted to. And unfortunately, they aren't doing that as much anymore. Still, they do make it very easy to get through comics. So you just find a comic, click on it, you have it uploaded. Some of them aren't in the best format for webtoons, but, you know, all you have to do is either click that little arrow at the bottom or scroll down and hold to make it go to the next comic. So pretty easy. And of course, if you like a comic, you can leave a little heart. And if you want to see what other people are saying about the comic, you can click on that little speech bubble to see other comments. Now, other things for parents to keep in mind about webtoons. Parents should note that Webtoons doesn't really have age ratings. So it is mostly made for adults. You can run into pretty much anything on here. Uh, some creators are very nice and will let you know what they think their age rating should be. Uh, like Lore Olympus, when they deal with some heavier content, they try to let you know, which is pretty nice. But I would say Lore Olympus is mostly for adults. It's one of their prettier comics, I would say. And it's very well done. It's about Hades and Persephone. Other than that, uh, one I could recommend for pretty much all ages is Sithra by Jason Brubaker. I uh, do love Jason Brubaker. He is great. 
And if we are going to look at that, Space Boy is also pretty good. So Sithra. Here's Jason Brubaker's stuff. He used to be an animator in DreamWorks, and then he became more of a graphic novelist and a comic maker. You can also find him on YouTube, which is pretty good. And then Space Boy is probably my favorite comic on here. If not, definitely my favorite comic. It's definitely my favorite comic. <laughs> Highly recommend. Uh, it does get into some heavier stuff sometimes, uh, like loss, losing family. I don't want to spoil anything because it's amazing, but I highly recommend Space Boy. And yeah, so parents should know there's basically no real age ratings, and you're going to want to check things for your kids, or just not let them use webtoons, which is probably the smart thing to do. There are some other webcomic websites that do try to include age ratings, but of course everybody's going to have different opinions about content and what is showing up in the comics. So for webcomics, it's kind of the Wild West in terms of knowing what's available and finding stuff that you're okay with your children reading. So yeah, I would just recommend trying to figure out what they're interested in and looking on your own. And I can try to list some of the stuff I like. Let me know if that'd be in a video that you would like to see. Overall, I do like webtoons. Currently, my main cons for webtoons are that they have limits to how many subscriptions you can do. It used to be 100 comics, and I liked just being able to, you know, bookmark what I've read and being able to go back to that series in the future if I wanted to. And I basically had to stop doing that for a while. But now they've increased it to, I think, 300 based on their most recent update notes. So I do appreciate that they're doing that. Uh, they are providing this as a free service. Some other things to note about Line Webtoon is that it is available on a browser. So you can read it from your computer. You can read it on your app. You know, it's very portable, very easy to use. It's very well done in terms of organization. You can find stuff pretty easily. Yeah, I'd say overall it's good. Yeah, just uh, try it out. You know, make an account if you're okay with that. It is free to try, you know? Uh, the main cons, once again, are that, you know, there are ads that you may need to watch. You can only have so many series in your subscription box, except now it's substantial. 300 is not a small number, and who's going to complain about that for free? One thing I would say is I would probably pay to be able to have even more subscriptions once I reach the limit. So that might be something they institute in the future, because they do need to make money. You know, they are trying to pay the creators that are in their originals. And it does help their canvas people out as well if advertisements are making money. I like Line Webtoon. Uh, I would not recommend it for children. Nope. And parents should be cautious with it. Other than that, yeah, I hope you have a great time reading. Have a great day, fellow reader. Mm -hmm.